Good morning, Wesley Chapel family. It's good to see you as we distance worship once again here on this 10th Sunday of Pentecost. It's great to be together. Remember, we're, st we're still having a, a drive-in worship at 9 a.m. here at the church each Sunday morning. We will continue that. I also want to tell you we have a backup plan. If it does rain or something like that, we, we will still have uh, drive-in worship. Uh, you'll still be in the parking lot. We will still broadcast on 90.5, but uh, we, will, we will probably uh, be inside the church leading worship. But we're glad to be together, and we would like to have you uh, however you're able to uh, be with us. So on this 10th Sunday of Pentecost, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the scripture where uh, Jesus is uh, inviting the disciples to uh, come together there um, as the storm hits, and they're terrified, but they learn the calmness um, from Jesus through his uh, love and his grace that supports us through the storms in our lives. Let's begin with prayer. We praise you, Lord God. We praise you because you are our God. You are our Redeemer, the Redeemer of your people. You provide for our needs and you give us blessings, blessings upon blessings. We praise you because you speak to us when we gather before you. May we commune with you in our prayers. May our spirits be lifted as we worship you in song. May our wills be strengthened and our direction be clarified as we meditate upon your word. We confess you as Lord and Savior, and we lift our hearts to worship you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Matthew, as I mentioned, chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. This week we experienced uh, a hurricane along our uh, shoreline of North Carolina from the all along the East Coast, and it came somewhat inland there around the uh, Ocean Isle. My friends um, were at Ocean Isle and they decided not to leave. They made a bad mistake. Through the night, they had uh, no way of um, tracking the storm or listening to weather reports, but they did have cell service. Another friend, common friend of ours, uh, stayed in touch all through the night and she was able to connect with WECT TV in Wilmington and she gave them 
blow-by-blow uh, -blow reports of what was going on. Even to the point that she was able to tell them in about 10 or 15 minutes, you're going to be in the eye of the storm. Just as she told them, about 11.05, everything was, uh, everything was so calm. And for about 20 minutes, everything was calm. Except there were fires all around where they were. There was destruction everywhere. And then the storm began again. And she stayed on the phone with them until about 2 o'clock. And I think she talked them through the storm. When morning came, the stairs were ripped from the home. They had seven cars there, and every one of them were totaled. There was destruction all around. There had been fires during the night. But because our other friend stayed on the phone with her, she was able to help her calm her fears somewhat. Something similar is going on in our scripture today in Matthew chapter 14. We find Jesus' disciples terrified on the Sea of Galilee. It's certainly not the first time. The disciples are no strangers to this lake because we know that uh, they had made their living on this lake. They had been around it all their lives. Actually, they're out there all the time. Even before Jesus called them to fish for people, they were here to fish for fish. No doubt risking their lives for a good catch. A quick look back at chapter 8 reminds us of one traumatic experience they had not so very long ago. You may recall the story a windstorm comes up, a windstorm arises so strong that the boat is just swamped and it begins to sink. Scared to death, the disciples yell to Jesus, who is fast asleep in the back of the boat. Lord, save us! Save us, they said. We are perishing. Do you not care? Jesus responds calmly. Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? You have a little faith. Then he gets up. He rebukes the wind, calms the sea, and the disciples are amazed. Today, it's not really the weather that is frightening the disciples. By now, they can handle being tossed about by the strong winds and waves. Oh, it concerns them. But they've been there and they've done that. Today, they are frightened by something else. An eerie figure walking toward them on the surface of the sea. It's a ghost, they cry. But Jesus reassures them. Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Comforting words. Comforting words. Let alone the ability to defy gravity. Now this does not quite satisfy Peter. He seeks further proof of Jesus. He wants to know for sure this is Jesus. And he says, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus doesn't have a problem with that. He says, come on. Come on. And so Peter does. But after just a few steps, the wind startles him. And he begins to sink, crying. Lord, save me. Save me. Of course, Jesus does save Peter. But he also asks him a sobering question once again. You of little faith, why did you doubt me? Now, Jesus' question is just a little bit different version of the same one he asked back in chapter 8. We call it deja vu. Right here in the middle of the Sea of Galilee, make no mistake, these questions are just as much for us as they were for those early disciples. 
So why do we have doubt? Why do we have fears in the midst of the storm? Jesus calmed the storm with his voice. He fed 5,000 people with only a few loaves of bread and a few fish. He walked on water. And in light of all this, how could we ever not have faith? Well, one answer is fear. Like the disciples, we have storms in our lives, literally and figuratively. Sometimes storms pop up in our lives and scare us half to death. That's what storms do. It's only natural for us. I think about my dogs scared to death of a storm. They want to hide. They fret when it thunders. I think about um, children. A child wants to cling to their mother when they see lightning or when they hear thunder. I think about when we're driving and the storm is so rough, the rain is so heavy that we can no longer see, we pull to the side of the road. But it's not just wind and rainstorms that scare us. There are so many other storms in life. Even if they are, are metaphorical storms, there are so many storms in our lives. And the storms grow stronger day by day. Global pandemics Contentious election cycles, horrifying diagnoses, economic downturns, relationships, personal and as a community, as a nation. It shakes us to the core. In the midst of difficult setbacks, and there are so many these days, it's not uncommon for anyone to have doubts. That's exactly what happened to Peter in today's gospel. And it's exactly what the disciples did in chapter 8. All Jesus does is ask why. Like any good teacher, he already knows the answer to the question, but he wants us to know it also. He wants us to think it through critically. Why? Simply put, it's because we're human. Fear is quite literally an instinct. It's a human instinct. Humans are wired with a fight or flight response. We have this reflex for a reason. When our lives are in jeopardy, or more commonly uh, for us today, when our identity is threatened, we are naturally inclined to react in fleeting ways. When that happens, we tend to leave calm, rational thoughts behind. And for that reason, we often need some assistance, getting back to a more faithful frame of mind. Think about this. If you've ever taken a public speaking class, and I know most of us have, somewhere along the way, even if it were, was when we were in high school, one of the things you learn is how important it is to engage your audience. Speakers have many tools for doing this. Perhaps the most important is the rhetorical question. Rhetorical questions engage audiences because asking a question gets listeners to think of their own answers. And as they do, they become personally connected 
to the subject in question. It helps people to think critically. This is to say, Jesus is not asking this rhetorical question, why did you doubt to shame Peter? Jesus is not in the shaming business. Instead, he uses the question to get a frightened Peter to focus on what's most important. And in the realm of life's storms, Faith is far more important than safety. Faith is the foundation of human life. Faith is, is, is as important as food, as important as water, as important as shelter. Only after faith is secured can safety add value to living. Now that's the message of the cross. This is the message of the cross. This is the message of Jesus' whole life. And faith is what Jesus wants Peter and all of us to focus on when storms come our way. And they do. Jesus' question prompts us to realize that faith is always within our reach. In other words, even in the stormiest times of life, when we most doubt our ability to make it through, we can remain faithful to God. Now, staying faithful to God does not simply mean going through the motions. It doesn't mean saying the creed while thinking about a shopping list, repeating Bible verses from memory, or repeating the Lord's Prayer while we are completely thinking about something else. It means for us, just like Peter, refocusing, refocusing on our commitment to faith. We will not always be perfectly faithful. And that's all right. Doubts will creep in and that's okay. But the important thing is to recover from those doubts and return to a place of faith. Our faith is strengthened and sustained by our relationship with God and nurtured by participating in our life in Christ through things like reading scripture, praying, and attending worship. Speaking of each Sunday when we confess our sins, when we admit that we don't always get everything right, but we repent and recommit our lives to walking in God's ways once again. Jesus Christ calls us to do that, to repent and recommit. This is the nature of of the Christian life. Peter is a prime example of what it means to live a life of holy imperfection. He has misunderstood before and he will misunderstand and even defy again. But today, today we see him refocusing on faith with a little help from Jesus as we need also. Watching Peter's journey reminds us of our own journey, a journey on which we can and should choose faithfulness, and a journey on which we, just like Peter, repent, recommit, and refocus on a faithfulness that comes from the knowledge and love of Jesus Christ through whom we have experienced the grace of God time and time again. Jesus Christ calls us today, repent, recommit, and refocus. And he will give us the grace for the journey. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us pray. We praise you again, Lord, from this time of worship together. We've listened for the quiet nudging of your spirit. We've sought the stirrings of your movings. We want to respond to your calling to us. Help us to take advantage, to take courage, and to not be afraid as we step out in faith to the things you'll ask from us this week. May each thought, may each deed be guided by your spirit. May our motives and intentions be influenced by the principles taught in your word. May our desire to be, to live, so to honor and to glorify your name, O oh God. We go with your peace. We go with your love. We go with your hope. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.